It's possible to die of a broken heart. Yes, broken heart syndrome is real and it's called Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. It's when your heart can't pump effectively, thought to be caused by stress hormones like adrenaline. Broken heart syndrome is an extreme example of acute stress causing a heart condition, but chronic stressors can lead to heart disease over time, increasing the risk of things like heart attacks and arrhythmias or abnormal heart rhythms. A ton of research has been done that links mental health to heart health and ultimately to the length and quality of our lives. The good news is that there is hope, so stay tuned till the end where we talk about a few ways to counteract these negative health effects. I'm Zane, a board-certified primary care doctor, and in this video we'll talk about the types of stressors that lead to heart disease, some potential mechanisms for how this happens on a microscopic and cellular level, and most importantly, what to do about it and how to fight back against the negative health effects of stress. So check this out. Noise pollution is actually associated with an increased risk of heart disease, so it's not surprising that the millions of Americans with mental health disorders like anxiety or depression are at a higher risk of heart disease and overall poorer health. One in five Americans have a mental health illness. For example, studies focused specifically on women with PTSD and depression show that they don't live as long because of coronary artery disease. Veterans as a result of PTSD from combat are at a higher risk of heart disease. And people who are in what researchers call adverse socioeconomic conditions could have a higher risk of high blood pressure or heart disease overall. So like this includes people who struggle to make ends meet or live in high crime areas or people who have had a rough childhood and people who are victims of racism and discrimination. The relationship between mental and physical health goes both ways. Atrial fibrillation is an abnormal heart rhythm that can actually lead to strokes and heart failure and it can be set off by stress and negative emotions in some people. But it's a big cause of stress for people who have it. Why? One possibility is that it is hard for people who have it to predict when it comes on which would give anybody anxiety. But at the end of the day, the health consequences of stress heavily depend on each person's individual physiological and emotional response to the situation, the environment, and to whatever the stressor may be. Chronic stress makes it more likely to have risk factors that lead to heart disease like diabetes, high blood pressure, and obesity. That brings me to the first and most obvious way that stress affects your body, indirectly through behaviors that we have in response to stress. Things like going out or having a little extra comfort food that we wouldn't have had otherwise if we weren't so stressed out. Someone dealing with depression, for example, might already be struggling and having difficulty coping with stressful situations, so they might turn to these behaviors or become more sedentary, putting them at a higher risk of disease. It's unfair that the things that make a lot of people feel better are also bad for your health, but these actions or inactions unfortunately have negative consequences on the body. Stress itself has been shown to be a risk factor for chronic disease, independent of its effect on obesity, hypertension, and diabetes rates, meaning that something else about stress negatively affects the body. So there's definitely something else happening on a deeper level when it comes to stress. And that's where the mind-body connection comes in. The second way stress affects the body is directly through biological mechanisms like nerve, hormone, or chemical signals that get distributed throughout the body, creating changes that ultimately end up causing damage that shortens our lives. The sympathetic nervous system, responsible for the fight or flight mode, stimulates the heart to beat faster and constricts blood vessels increasing heart rate and blood pressure. This effect is made stronger by the brain, stimulating the adrenal glands to release adrenaline and noradrenaline. It goes beyond that to the immune system where stress actually leads to activation of specific genes responsible for the clogging of arteries or atherosclerosis. That's the main culprit in cardiovascular disease. Oh, and side note, it also decreases the immune system's ability to fight viruses, so make sure that you get your vaccine if you haven't already. So yeah, look, your mom was right. Stress can give you a heart attack, but can reducing stress lower your risk of heart attacks and other forms of heart disease? Yes, but there's more research that needs to be done to not only connect stress reduction to living longer, but also what types of stress reduction work best and who they work best for. But what we do have are a bunch of smaller studies that suggest that reducing stress and improving mental health can improve physical health. Studies connecting meditation to reduction in heart attacks, strokes, and overall mortality in people with coronary artery disease or hypertension. Or data suggesting that helping others with errands or housework or giving them a ride somewhere protects against the negative effects of stress, the same ones we talked about earlier. Yeah, seriously. Let's prescribe that altruism twice a week with unlimited refills. I'm sure there's someone in your life who's watching this and saying, I told you so. Studies have even shown that reducing stress may reverse atherosclerosis and improve blood flow to the heart. 
Implementing lifestyle changes not only reduces stress, but things like exercise and adequate sleep reduce inflammation and help prevent stress from causing negative effects on the body in the first place. The American College of Cardiology recommends these five techniques to lower stress, which can ultimately improve your heart risk and help you live longer. They are relaxation techniques, yoga, guided imagery, mindfulness and meditation, and controlled breathing. Relaxation techniques, kind of like the pilot sleep technique I talked about in this video on how to sleep better naturally, leads to improved heart rate and blood pressure. Yoga, if you haven't tried it already, is the exercise of my ancestors, and I describe it as meditation for the body. It helps with chronic pain, strength, flexibility, and can help people de-stress and feel more calm. People should ease into new activities and check with their doctor before starting one if they're older or have chronic medical conditions. Guided imagery is where you imagine yourself in the middle of a relaxing environment using all of your senses to immerse yourself in it. There are a ton of videos and resources on meditation and mindfulness, including free or paid ones like Headspace or Calm. Controlled breathing has been shown to reduce stress, increase alertness, and help your immune system. Diaphragmatic breathing is when you take a deep breath, expand your belly, pause, and exhale slowly to the count of five. Box breathing is a technique that can heighten performance and concentration while also being a powerful stress reliever. So what else can you do? If you have questions, talk to your doctor about the relationship between mental health and heart disease and how it affects you. Specifically, patients who have had a heart attack or have AFib or have had a major heart event might benefit from a mental health assessment. People who suffer from mental health disorders can benefit from healthy diet and exercise habits for two reasons. They counteract the increased risk of heart disease and they work as a form of treatment for mental health disorders. Win-win. Of course, it's not easy to implement new changes, especially when we're already burdened by negative emotions or stress, so it's not a bad idea to involve family members, friends, or healthcare professionals to help you out. The results of studies that test whether stress reduction techniques can improve health are mixed, but think about it. If even just the behavioral changes that come about by stress reduction happen, isn't that enough for you to improve your overall health? The rest is up to researchers, healthcare systems, and healthcare professionals. And for other ways to improve your heart health, check out my video on dietary changes to lower blood pressure. Thanks for watching. Peace.